Good morning. So glad that you're worshiping with us this morning. Let's all stand together. Lift our voices singing House of the Lord. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. And we sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. Cause we were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven. Accepted, redeemed by His grace, let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet, but we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. A lot of announcements this morning. Um, first, though, welcome to Fifth Sunday. We've got our kids up here front and center um, in a kids-focused um, sermon, I think, this morning. So we're happy to have them join us in the sanctuary today. Um, we have a lot of announcements. Usually at the end of the year, a lot of things start rolling. So there's a lot of details, and I'm just going to touch on a few things from the bulletin. Today is Worship in the Park. Um, that's with Love Chapel, and as far as I know, that's still happening despite the weather. There's um, a shelter house there at Donner, so I would guess they would probably still have that event, but if I see different on their website or Facebook, I'll send out an email later today. Um, the Ides Meal Packing, we're finally here. It's this week on Wednesday, and we hope to see as many of you as possible there to help us pack those meals. It's a really fun event, um, and we've got a lot of volunteers signed up, but even if your name isn't on the list, we still invite you to come and help. There'll be plenty of jobs. Also this week is First Thursday group. They're meeting on October 3rd, so this Thursday at 11. Um, the discussion this week is going to be Medicare and Medicare supplements. So pack a lunch and plan to attend that. 
Also, starting in October, we are going to be collecting money for Love Chapel. We typically collect like an item for the Christmas baskets, like a can of green beans, something like that. Um, but this year, we're going to do something a little different, and we're just going to do monetary donations. Um, they're packing baskets that are $80 a piece, and we've committed to provide 12 of those from New Hope. Um, so that's $960 by the end of October that we'd like to collect to be able to sponsor those baskets. Um, and Love Chapel's goal for our community is 17,000 baskets um, to distribute. So that is a lot, and we would love to do our part to help with that goal. 1,700. Oh, 1,700. That's a lot of baskets, I guess. 1,700. <laughs> um, okay, next is Fall Fest. Um, and we've got the date, October 26. We've got that planning underway. A lot of fun things planned. A bouncy house, games, snacks. We're going to have trunk or treat this year, um, and we're going to be doing something a little bit different to raise money for child um, advocates, and that is a chili cook-off. And I'm going to have Tamara come up um, and tell you a little bit about that. Her and Vicki are going to head that part up. So. Hi, good morning. My name is Tamara, for those who don't know me. Um, so, like said we are going to try and do a chili cook-off this year and um, I am heading that so if you have any questions please come to me I'm asking for 12 to 15 volunteers um, at least 12 and probably no more than 15 um, I'm asking for that many and then there is a sign-up sheet in the back foyer so if you are interested in signing up for that please put your name down back there so I can have a head count and then when you do sign up, please keep in mind that um, we would like you to be in person to serve your chili or have someone in place to serve that for you on the day of the event. And then also, please arrive early enough to the event to make sure that you have everything set up. That event does start at 4. And then be prepared to serve outside as the chili cook-off will be held outside. Thank you. Right, and there will be a prize for the winner of the chili cook-off, so we definitely want you to bring your best recipe and share that uh, for that event. And then kind of attached to Fall Fest, we wanted to clean up a little bit outside, um, just get the outside looking presentable for that event. So we are going to squeeze in a outside cleanup date on October 12th, and there's more details there in the bulletin. Um, I know that's fall break for some, but if you're in town, we'd love to have your help getting the building outside ready for that event. And then also Thanksgiving outreach meal we did last year where we delivered meals instead of cooking for ourselves, we cooked for those in our community. Um, and that went really well and we've got some updates of how things are gonna run and that is gonna be on Sunday, November 24th. So mark your calendars for that as well. And with that, I'm gonna read Deuteronomy 6, one through nine and it's on the inside of your bulletin. We did things a little different to make a coloring page for the kiddos on the front, which is going to be um, also a coloring contest. I think John will probably mention that. So Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 9. Love the Lord your God. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised to you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Right before we pray, I wanted to wish Melvin Hurd a happy 86th birthday. We could all give him a round of applause for his birthday. This week. Okay, and with that, we'll pray this morning together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Sunday to be all together in a full sanctuary here to worship you. Thank you for these kids who are front and center this morning, but we pray that they're front and center in our hearts um, as we nurture them as the next generation and the next disciples of you. Thank you again for all your blessings. We pray you're with us as John brings the message. Fill him, us, in this place with your Holy Spirit. 
Spirit. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so as many of you can see, we're having some issues with the computer this morning. I apologize for that. I think you're going to know these next couple of songs pretty well, though. So I still encourage you to sing along with us if you do know them. We're going to start things off here with Waymaker. I worship you, I worship you, you are here working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are here moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship who you are that is who you are that is who you are that is who you are even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, Working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, oh, you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. And all my life you have been faithful. so so good with every breath that i am able i will sing of the goodness of god i love you lord oh your mercy never fails me all my I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. so so good with every breath that i am able i will see of the goodness of god and i love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have lived in the goodness of god all my life and all my life you have been faithful the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I'll let you kids decide this. Should we sing happy birthday to Melvin? It's a good song, let's do that. Go ahead. Where is Melvin? Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
86. I didn't have you. I didn't have you a day over 85. Not really. You're hanging in there. You know what? If if technology has to go bad, I like the way that it went bad. It's like the screens on the Star Trek ship when it's when you're out of orbit and stuff, and it's going all glitchy all of a sudden. I just thought it was. I thought it was cool. <laughs> New Hope Enterprise out of control, um, out of orbit, please talk us back in. It was just cool. I thought that was good. I'm going to, uh, let's all stand, you guys too. And we're going to read a short gospel reading that is on the screen. And let's read it together. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's the word of the Lord. You may be seated. It's good to see you guys here. It's good to see kids sprinkled in the, uh, in the congregation too. I like it when we have kids Sundays. We love you guys. You know how you know we love you? We gave you carpet down to the basement. Did you notice your little walk areas down to the basement now have carpet? So that's, we love you enough to get you carpet. We always have fun whenever you guys are, are up here. And I think uh, some of the adults get as much out of a kid's service as the, the kids do sometimes. Uh, before I get started, let me remind you of all the rules. The, up here, okay, guys? Don't spill your drink, okay? Uh, don't spill your drink, okay? Don't drop crumbs on the floor, all right? Don't talk. Pay attention. Uh, stay in your seat. Don't walk around, okay? And don't hit. All right? All right, I'm mostly just kidding. I, I want to make, make a point, and that is this, and you guys know it better than anybody. There sure are a bunch of rules when you're a kid, right? Don't you hear rules and instructions and commands all the time? Raise your hand if you've heard somebody say this to you. It's probably going to be some adult somewhere that said it. Eat your broccoli. Yeah, heard somebody say that. Some people out there too. Don't play with your food. Have you heard somebody say that? Yeah. Uh, don't pick your nose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's not how you hold a spoon. This is kind of nitpicky one, right? Take off your muddy shoes at the door. Yeah, there's that. Clean your room. Yeah, been told that. Make your bed. Yeah, been told that. Brush your teeth. Been told that. Quiet. Use your inside voice. Yeah, you've all heard that. Stop pestering your brother or your sister. Right? We've all heard that. Uh, what about this one? I used to hear this one all the time. John Mark, don't throw rocks at the dinosaurs. <laughs> How many of you <laughs> see... I was a, here's the problem, I was a kid a long, long time ago, just so you know. Actually, all the adults will tell you this, too, that even as an adult, you never get away from the rules. Uh, don't go faster than the speed limit, mm, okay? Uh, watch your language, you know, sometimes an adult will be told that. Uh, or the doctor looks at my blood work and after the doctor brings in the results, he'll tell me the same thing that your mom and dad tell you. Eat your vegetables, right? What we often hear in rules is a big don't, okay? Commands that tell us what not to do. About 3,500 years ago, God gave Moses a famous list of commandments. Uh, how many of them, how many did he get? How many commands did Moses get? 
10 on, on tablets of stone, 10 main things that the people of Israel were supposed to obey. And I, I, we tend to think of them all as sort of a, as a don't kind of thing, each one of them, right? Here's the list of them up there. Uh, don't worship other gods, you know, uh, down farther. Don't, don't forget to keep the Sabbath rest. Don't treat your mom and dad bad. Don't, don't kill. Don't, don't uh, commit uh, adultery. Don't steal, all, all that stuff. Th these were important instructions mostly for two things. To help people keep their eyes on God and then to help people get along with each other a little bit better. They were rules for actually making the community, people living together to make things better. But here's what happens with rules. Most often, rules lead to more rules, okay? So, for instance, yes, we want to honor God by resting on the Sabbath on Saturday because that's how God uh, rested at the end of creation, but people wondered, what if your animal, your farm animal, falls into a ditch? What do you do if that's the case? Can you get it out? And so out of that comes an additional rule. Yeah, if your animal falls into the ditch on a day when you know you should be resting, you can still get your animal out of the ditch. Just make sure you get back to your resting, that kind of stuff. And that's what happens all the time in rulemaking. That's what happens at church. Whenever we make, we like to make policies, and whenever we make a policy, as soon as you make it, there's going to be some exception to the policy that you have to write another point. And it's just on and on. Rules create more rules. Did you know this, that some religion teachers counted up the rules that are in the Old Testament and there were 613 of them. 613 that come after the big 10. And then over the next few centuries, even more rules were added to the picture. In fact, it gets up into the thousands. It doesn't take very long for the 10 rules of God to turn into 10 books of rules, right? And, and uh, some people like to think that's a Jewish thing. That's not a Jewish thing. That's a human thing. That's just the way people tend to do. Well, more than a thousand years after the Ten Commandments, along comes Jesus. And guess what? He's the only person that's ever lived that perfectly kept all the commandments. He's faithful to every rule that's ever written. And when he comes, he teaches something that's really interesting. And by the way, do you guys know where we would find the teachings of Jesus in the Bible? Any idea? I'll give you a hint. Primarily in four books is where we will find the teachings of Jesus. Yes, you're off to a good start, young man. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in adult worship up here, we have spent the last year bouncing our way through John's gospel. And today, I want to focus on those two verses in John 13. And I'm going to break it down into parts. First of all, Jesus says, a new command I give to you. And People's response to that should be, what? Another command. We've already got thousands of commands. There are so many of them that we can't even learn them. This is too complicated. Don't make it worse by giving us another command. But it's Jesus, and we should listen to Jesus. So, okay, what is that command? And Jesus says the command we should remember is love one another. It's an interesting command for Jesus uh, to give because, first of all, it's not a don't command, right? 
It's not something to avoid. Don't do this. It's a yes command. It's, it's not about something to cut out, but it's something to add on to your life. It's a positive command. And it's, it's also an interesting command when you think about it because most, when you think about the commandments that God gives us, most of those are trying to get us to care about people. Even when they are a don't do this command, what they're ultimately about is be good to people. Like that silly command I gave at the beginning, don't make a mess. It's not a big deal. As a kid, you're going to make a mess. But why would you not want to make a mess? Because somebody's going to have to come along and clean it up, right? So it makes kind of sense. You don't make a mess because you want to be good to the person that might have to come uh, past after you. And when you look at the Ten Commandments, they try to get us to do two things. They try to get us to care about God. And they try to get us to care about the people around us. Uh, why don't kill? Why would you have the command don't kill? Anybody got to know why you might not want to kill somebody? Because you could get arrested. There's even, a, <laughs> that's true. Not if you're careful. I'm kidding. <laughs> why? Why else do you not, would you not want to kill somebody? I mean, if I, had a, if I had a feeling I should kill you, should I do it? Who would it be bad for? It'd be bad for you, right? It, it, it's a command because it's the most unnice thing you can do to anybody, right? Is to take their, their life away from them. It's a very basic thing. We don't kill other people because we care enough about them not to do that. And um, uh, what about the thing, don't, don't steal from people? Why would, would, why would I not steal from you, Colton? Because uh, whoever you steal from could be sad. Yeah, it would make your life a little bit messier, wouldn't it? You would not have something that you had before. You'd be sad that somebody invaded your life, took something out of it, it makes things worse for people. In his teaching in the Gospels, and again we're talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus makes this excellent point, I think. He says that every single commandment of God, so think of all the 613, think of the 10, think of the thousands that come after them, that all the commandments of God boil down to two things. Number one, say it if you know it, love God. And what's the other one? Love each other. Love the people around you. And if you make love the number one rule of your life, then all the other commands of God tend to fall in place, even without having uh, to think about them. I mean, if you, if you really love people, you won't kill them, probably, right? Uh, you won't steal from them. You won't want stuff from their life, uh, all of that. So love one another. Big deal in Jesus' teaching. Commercial break now. Did somebody groan? <laughs> oh, front of your bulletin, just a reminder, here's what this is. We made the front of the bulletin just for kids and people who are kids at their heart. You could be 86 years old and still have a young heart and want to do this, but here's what you need to do. Take your bulletin home, color it, Bring it back, give it to Emily or one of the youth sponsors, and we're going to have a coloring contest on this picture that reminds us to what? To love each other. And write your name on it. Yeah. And uh, we'll have a prize. Actually, we're the kind of place where everybody will have a prize, but that's another thing. Oh, well. All right, back to the lesson. We're not quite done. Jesus commanded us to love one another. But isn't that interesting? Think about it. If somebody tells you to love somebody else, I mean, you can command somebody not to steal. 
and, and you'll know that somebody's not stealing by them not stealing. Their actions will tell you that they understand the command, right? But we usually think of love as a feeling, as some warm feeling in our heart. How can you command people to love each other when people might not always feel it, even when another person might not even deserve it? I mean, imagine this, somebody punches you in the nose and there's that command out there. You've got to love somebody, you've got to love the other person. How do you do that? I mean, you're not feeling all warm and fuzzy toward that person. You're upset with them, but you can still do the things that show you love them. And I think what Jesus does in his ministry is make love more about how you act than about how you feel. Love is caring for people no matter what. Love is doing what's best for people, even when you might not have that warm feeling for them. It's, it's being good to people even when they don't deserve it. And the next sentence in our verse is, is uh, very interesting in that way. Jesus says, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Jesus becomes the example for what we mean as Christians when we talk about love. Love is an unselfish thing. It's caring about people. It's bringing good into their lives even when they uh, might not deserve it, even when you might not feel like it. There is a Bible verse that says this, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I've got a closing question. Why do you think this whole love thing is so important? And it is. I've told you guys that the adults here, we've been working our way through John's gospel. How many Sundays have we bumped into the theme of love? It's like John, the gospel writer, everything he records about Jesus has something to do about love. He cannot get past the topic of love. And, and why is love such, such a big thing? I think... Our two verses this morning tell why. And I'm going to tell you a story. This will, be, this will be the end of it, guys. And I'm going to call this the big story of the Bible. Or maybe the big story of God. This is like the big picture. Once upon a time, uh, in the beginning, you might say, God created a beautiful world that was filled with wonderful things and with human creatures that God could relate to and creatures that could relate to each other. And in the beginning, all the creatures got along. It was a beautiful thing. But human beings, being who they are, got rebellious and they ended up messing up the whole package. So that instead of having friendship, instead of having everything fit together nicely, the world was full of lies and full of violence, full of all those things that the Ten Commandments are against. I always say that I think if I was God, what I would have done is I would have done a complete do-over. I would have taken the whole package, thrown it in the garbage, burned it up, and start it over again, plan number two. But turns out, God is very committed to what he makes, even when it goes bad. And what God decided to do, rather than to throw it out, is to fix it, to get the world back in shape. And the surprising part of this is that God decides to invite human beings into that work to become a part of the whole fixing thing, okay? 
God says, what I need to flip this thing around is I need an example. I need a group of people who will be an example to all the rest of the people in the world. I need an example. A living, breathing community that follows my ways and because of that enjoys <coughs> the best kind of life. And that example is the nation in the Bible called Israel. The, they're kind of featured in the Old Testament, actually featured in the New Testament. It's basically this nation of people that God raises up from nowhere and they are going to be God's specially chosen example. He will give them all the commands that they need for good living. That's what the Ten Commandments are about. <coughs> he will take care of them and make them prosperous. And as they live as that example, they will become a light to the whole world. And through them, all the blessings of God will flow out into the world. The world will think, yeah, let's be like that. That's what God decides to do. Do you see how a, a group of people that loves and follows God might become the example that begins to change the whole world. Israel is that first example. Well, it's a risky thing because human beings are involved, but that's the way that God wants to do it. After many years, many centuries actually, of ups and downs, there's a new piece to the plan. Uh, not really a new plan, but just a new emphasis. God comes into this still broken world as God in the flesh, as Jesus. God himself enters the world and he teaches. And what, what do the teachings mostly have to do with? If you believe John's gospel is accurate in portraying what Jesus teaches, he teaches love, the law of love. And after living and teaching love, he does the most loving thing ever. He dies for the people of the world, dies for their sins. And out of this comes a community of people that are attracted to Jesus and say, wow, we would like to be like Jesus. We would like to love like him. And that group of people is called the church. And the church, guess what? Just like Israel, the church is to be an example to the world. Uh, you and me, we're people who are supposed to be, in the way we live our lives together, we are supposed to be a demonstration to the rest of the world of what God wants all of creation to look like. And what is the main thing that folks should see when they look in on the church? Got a good word for that disposition that should be in the church? Seems like the word love would be a pretty good thing. And when people look in on the church and they see the love of God, then the church is being that example. Jesus ends that verse of teaching by saying this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And it's only when we love each other that it's really clear that we are the followers of Jesus. And when we do that, we become part of God's plan for fixing creation. And I think that's a pretty amazing thing to be included in. How do you come into, you know, what's the traditional, historical, biblical way that people enter into that community of faith? It's through baptism. And you kids, if you haven't already, you should be thinking about that as a possibility 
in your life, you adults too, if you haven't done it, but this past week, what happened to you, Colton, this week? Oh, yes, you did. You got baptized. Colton got baptized. I think, I hope. I hope this video works. And he's been talking and celebrating with us uh, just the Holy Spirit working in Colton. Got a little dance thing I could do up here, <laughs> working on my TikTok game. <laughs> Uh, just the Holy Spirit working in Colton, and he's been talking. It's about really this. good, folks. He first mentioned We're, it's it not. Last it's year. not going to work today. What we will do, we'll show it again next week. But I will also. Uh, I'll send it out. Uh, Mackenzie uh, uh, will send it out in the emailing this week. There, the. Uh, I'll tell you. Spoiler alert. Uh, David talks about. Colton finding out there was going to be a baptism and he says hey I heard there was going to this is before his baptism he said he found out about it and he said hey there's a baptism and and uh, his dad said yeah and he said uh, is it mine <laughs> it wasn't but that came up quickly anyway be, be thinking through that I think we're good David I I think a closing song rather than closing dance would be appropriate at this point. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard tender whisper of love in the dead of night you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. There's only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all.
still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still into love, love, love. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. To who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Good morning. Of you who don't know me, I am Sarah Hudson. Um, used to be the children's minister, so this is fun to get back in front of all the kids. All right, guys. So when we say someone is going to take communion, do you know what that means? Like, what are they physically going to do if you're going to take communion? Yeah. Annie, what are you going to do when you take communion? Spend time with Jesus. What are we gonna, what do we do during communion? And do you eat it? Right, so you're gonna have a little piece of bread or a wafer, and then you're gonna have a little cup of juice. Do you guys know what the bread represents? Jesus' body, what about the juice or the cup? Andrew? His blood, right? Sorry, I tried to print this out this morning, but I'm having diff uh, technical difficulties today. So, those are the physical aspects of taking communion. But do you guys know why we take communion? So, communion honors the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. So, the bread is his body is, as the sacrifice for us, and the cup as the blood that he shed on the cross. Jesus' sacrifice was for the forgiveness of our sins so that we can live forever with him and God in heaven. The Bible teaches us that we must ask for forgiveness for things we do wrong, which we all do. And it teaches us that we must forgive others as God forgives us. Well, communion is a time of reflection and confession and repentance of our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness. But it's also a chance to check our hearts and make sure that we are not holding on to any unforgiveness towards others. Communion is one of the most meaningful parts of our relationship with Christ. It helps us stay connected with Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. So let's talk about the sacrifice on the cross for a minute. And John kind of touched on this this morning. Um, it was the biggest love story in, that has ever been told. It's the focal point of the entire Bible. It's everything, everything before it was anticipation for and leading up to it, and everything after has been because of it. Jesus' love for us is undeniable and unmatched to anything else. So when you guys have a really good story to tell or really big news, what do you guys do? Huh? Pray? But if you have really something really exciting that happened to you, what are you guys going to do? Today. This is not like you. <laughs> if something really exciting happened to you at school, what are you going to do? Tell everyone, right? Yes. So, I, as soon as I know something exciting, I go and tell everybody I know. So while Paul is talking about how Christians should live among and support each other, Colossians 3.16 says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. So it's exciting to tell people that we know 
our good news, right? And it's easy to talk to other Christians about Jesus. But what about those who don't already know God? Colossians 4, 5 goes on to say, Be wise in the way that you act toward others. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. So we pray often here um, that we open our hearts and take what we learn on Sundays and then we go out into the world and show, everyone's God, show everyone God's light. But I want to challenge all of us in this room uh, to be so excited about the news of Jesus' love for us and his great sacrifice that we can't wait to make the most of every opportunity, whether it's with someone we've known our entire lives or someone that we may have just met in the grocery store checkout line. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time together this morning. We thank you for all of these children who are here to worship you with us this morning. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us, um, to be the biggest demonstration of love that there could be. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts up, that we feel your love, and then we go out into the world and we shine it on everybody else, and that everyone can be a witness to your love through our actions. Lord, let us take this time um, in this silent moment here to just really reflect on who we are and what we've done and um, your will for us going forward and to just forgive us of anything that we may have done that was unpleasing for you. We pray this in your son's Jesus' name. First Corinthians 11:24 24 through 26 says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.